Chapter One, My Family. A group of people who are related to each other and live together forms a family. Since they are all related to each other, they are also called relatives. All the relatives may or may not live with us, but together they all make a family. Types of families. We can group families in two main types: nuclear family and joint family. Nuclear family. A nuclear family consists of parents and their children. A nuclear family is usually a small family. Some nuclear families have a single parent, mother or father, and child or children. This type of family is called a single parent family. Joint family. A joint family consists of parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts and cousins they all live in the same house a joint family is a large family relationships in a family all the members in a family are closely related to each other let us know what we call our close relatives in english father of our father paternal grandfather mother of our father paternal grandmother brother of our father uncle sister of our father aunt wife of our uncle aunt children of our father's brother or sister and mother's brother or sister are called cousins caring and sharing in the family The members of a family love and care for each other. They help each other and share the workload of household activities such as cleaning, washing, cooking and looking after babies. This caring and sharing makes a family happy. We also learn many things from our family. The elders in our family teach us values and good habits. Our parents, grandparents and elders teach us good manners. Family tree. A family tree tells us how the family members are related to each other. It reveals about the generation of people living in the family. A generation consists of people born around the same time. For example, you, your siblings and cousins belong to the same generation your parents and their siblings belong to the generation before yours and your grandparents belong to the previous generation to your parents look at the family tree on the next page grandpa grandma mother father me my brother uncle aunt my cousins fun with the family we like to spend time with our family we do many things together we celebrate festivals and special days together we also go for picnics and trips together family members enjoy get together during important occasions we meet our relatives on special occasions such as weddings birthdays and other parties Chapter 2 We care Our abilities to see hear smell taste and feel are called our senses We have five sense organs that help us in understanding what is happening around us Eyes ears nose tongue and skin are our five sense organs The eyes Eyes help us see things around us. They are our windows to the world. Our eyes need light to see things. We cannot see much when it is dark. 
When ever our eyes see anything, they send a message to the brain which tell us what we are looking at. Some people are not able to see things clearly. Such people wear spectacles. Spectacles help them see things better. Some people cannot see at all. They are called visually challenged. But this does not mean that they cannot read or write. They use their sense of touch, hear and smell to identify the things around them. They read a special script called the Braille script. This script consists of raised dots on a special paper. These raised dots use combination to spell letters and numbers. The visually challenged people move their fingers on the paper to feel and read these dots. The Braille script was developed by Louis Braille, who himself was a visually challenged person. The Ears We hear different kinds of sound with our ears. Some sounds are pleasant and we like to listen to them. But some sounds are unpleasant. Bursting of crackers and heavy traffic on the road produce unpleasant sounds. Some people, including the elderly, cannot hear properly. We need to speak louder while talking to them. Some people cannot hear at all. They use a hearing device which is worn in the ear to help them hear louder and clearer. Such people communicate using sign language, a system of communication using hand movements. The nose. We smell with our nose. It also helps us breathe. It picks up the smell around us and sends the message to the brain. The brain immediately tells us whether the smell is good or bad. We react according to this message. The tongue. We taste food with our tongue. There are many taste buds on our tongue. These taste buds tell us if something is sweet, sour, bitter or salty. The tongue helps us swallow the food and also speak and sing. Care for physically challenged people. Always help a physically challenged person. Never make fun of them or their condition. Never let them feel depressed. Treat them equal as other people and let them live with dignity. Take out some time for them. For example, you can read books and magazines to a visually challenged person. Be friendly to them. There are many organizations that help physically challenged people. Try to be a part of these organizations. Looking after the elderly people. Our elders become slow and physically weak with age. Most elderly people have poor vision and are not able to hear properly. They need our love, support and care. We should always love and respect the elderly people. We should always help them. We should spend some time with them. We should take them to the doctor when they are sick or unwell. We should go for a walk with them. We should never hurt their feelings. The Skin Our whole body is covered with skin. It is the largest sense organ. Skin helps us feel things. It tells us whether something is hot, cold, soft or rough. Skin protects our body from outer physical injuries. The skin also produces sweat to keep our body cool when it is very hot. All our sense organs work with the help of our brain. We should take proper care of our sense organs. There are many people who cannot see, hear or speak. There are some people who cannot use their hands and legs as efficiently as we commonly do. Such people are known as differently abled or 
special people. They need a lot of love, care and attention. Chapter 3 Food All the living things need food to stay alive. Food gives us energy to do various activities. It helps our body grow and repair. It also protects us from diseases and keeps us healthy. Food contains important substances which our body needs. These substances are called nutrients. The main nutrients in food are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins and minerals. Carbohydrates Carbohydrates give us energy to work and play. They are present in good amount in sweet things such as sugar, cakes, potatoes, rice, bread, cakes and honey. People who do more physical work need a lot of carbohydrates in their diet. Fats Fats also give energy to our body. In fact, they give more energy than carbohydrates and also keep our body warm. Fats are found in oil, ghee, butter and nuts. Consuming too much of fat is not good for health because it makes us lazy and obese. Proteins Proteins help our body grow well. They also help in repairing the damaged parts of our body. Protein-rich food is also called bodybuilding food. Pulses, eggs, fish, beans, milk, cheese and meat are good sources of protein. Milk is a complete food because it contains all the essential nutrients. Children need more proteins than adults because they are in their growing up stage. Vitamins and Minerals Vitamins and minerals protect us from diseases. They keep our body fit and healthy. Food items rich in these nutrients are called protective foods. Calcium, iron and iodine are a few important minerals that our body needs. Calcium makes our bones and teeth strong. Iron makes blood in our body. Iodine keeps us free from goiter, a disease in which the neck swells up. Vitamins and minerals are found in fruits, vegetables and milk. Besides these nutrients, our body also needs water and fibers. Water helps in proper digestion of food. It also helps in removing waste from the body in the form of urine and sweat. We should drink 6 to 8 glasses of water every day. Fibers Fibers also help in the digestion of food. They are found in whole grains, fruits and vegetables. A balanced diet A balanced diet is one that contains all the essential nutrients like proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins and minerals in right quantity. It keeps us healthy and strong and helps our body grow properly. The quantity of food taken by a person depends on his or her age and physical activities he or she does. Sources of Food Food is obtained from both plants and animals. Food from Plants Plants make their own food with the help of water, air and sunlight. Plants use a part of this food for their own growth. The rest is stored in various parts like roots, stems, leaves, flowers, seeds and fruits. Human beings and animals eat many of these parts as food. Plant food is taken cooked but some parts can be taken raw. Parts of plants used as food. Root like carrot, radish, beetroot, turnip. Stem like potato, sugarcane, ginger, onion. Leaves like spinach, coriander, cabbage, lettuce. Seeds 
like cereals, wheat, rice, maize, oats, peas, pulses like masoor, gram, arhar. Flowers like cauliflower and broccoli. Fruits like mango, banana, grapes and orange. Food from animals. Animals also give us a variety of food items. Milk. We get milk from cow, buffalo, goat and camel. Meat. Animals like goat, hen, fish and sheep give us meat. We get eggs from hens and ducks. Honey. It is obtained from bees. Bees make honey in their honeycombs by sucking nectar from a variety of flowers. Food Habits Many different types of grains, fruits, vegetables etc. are grown in India. People living in different parts take different kinds of food. India is a country of varied cultures. The ways of cooking food in different cultures also vary. Food Habits of People in Different Regions Region, North States, Food Habits, Wheat Western States, Wheat, Jawar, Bajra Eastern and Southern States, Rice Coastal Areas, Fish People who do not take meat, egg and fish are called vegetarians. They take only plants and dairy products. People who take meat, egg and fish including the plant products are called non-vegetarian. Eating habits in a family. People of different age groups and genders live in a family. Throughout the day, they do different physical activities. So, the amount and type of food required by them varies. Elderly members, they prefer food with a little oil and spices which is easy to chew and digest. Young male members. Their food includes a lot of green vegetables and all kinds of food types for maintaining good health. Young female members. Their food consists of items rich in carbohydrates and proteins. It gives them energy to do all the household as well as outside work. They cook food, serve it to all the members and then eat their food at the last. Children. They like to eat junk food but it is not good for their health. They should take homemade food including chapatis, rice, vegetables, fruits and pulses for their proper growth and development. Newborn Babies A newborn baby drinks only milk. Milk is a complete food for them. When the baby is about 6 months old and has some teeth, it is given mashed food like banana and dal. A grown-up baby can have a small amount of food with less spices. It needs milk at least 3 to 4 times a day. Methods of Cooking We take different kinds of food. Some of them are taken raw, for example fruits like banana and apple and vegetables like cucumber and radish while some are eaten cooked. Cooking makes our food soft, tasty and easy to digest. Heat kills harmful germs that can cause diseases. Therefore, it also makes food safe to eat. Let us know about different methods of cooking food. Boiling Cooking food in sufficient water is called boiling. Rice, pulses, eggs, potatoes and many other vegetables are boiled. Steaming Cooking food in steam is called steaming. It helps preserve most of the nutrients present in food items. Vegetables like spinach and peas and dishes like idlis, momos and dhokla are cooked by steaming. Roasting it is done over an open fire or in a vessel. Some examples of food items that are roasted are brinjal, chicken, fish and potato. Frying 
The process of cooking food in hot oil or ghee is called frying. Puris, samosas and jalebis are fried food. Baking. Baking means cooking food in dry heat of an oven. Cakes, buns, breads, biscuits, pizza etc. are baked foods. Vessels used for cooking. Different types of vessels and utensils are used for cooking food by different methods. In early times, people used clay pots to cook food. But today, the vessels in which we cook our food are made of metals like steel, aluminium, copper and brass. Different vessels used in cooking are frying pan, griddle, karhai, pressure cooker, etc. A stove is necessary for cooking food. We use different types of fuels in different types of stoves. Different types of stoves as well as the fuels used in them are listed below. Chulha, wood or cow dung cakes. Angiti, coal. Kerosene stove, kerosene. Gas stove, liquefied petroleum gas. Solar cooker, solar or sun's energy. Microwave oven and hot plate, electricity. Chapter 4 Our Shelters all of us need a house to live in. A house gives us shelter and protects us from heat, cold, rain, storm, thieves, insects and wild animals. We feel safe and comfortable in our house. Types of Houses There are different types of houses. They depend on the climate, rainfall and building materials available at the place. In villages, people build houses from straw, bamboo and mud. These are called kacha houses. The roofs are made of thatch and dry leaves. These houses are not very strong. Huts are examples of kacha houses. In cities, towns and some villages, People build houses using bricks, cement, wood, steel and glass. These houses are very strong and last long. Bungalows and multi-storey buildings are examples of such houses. In cities, many people live in multi-storey buildings. A multi-storey building or apartment has many floors. These floors have independent houses called flats. These floors are built one on top of the other due to lack of space in cities. In big cities like Mumbai, Delhi and Kolkata, many people are forced to live in conditions which are very unhygienic and crowded. Such areas are called slums. People in slums have their houses made with tin, shacks, tents and even drain pipes. Many of them do not have proper access to basic facilities of water, electricity and sanitation. They often suffer from many infections and diseases. Special Houses Some people live in special houses. These houses are usually temporary in nature. Igloo. People in very cold regions live in igloos. People who live in igloos are called Inuits. An igloo is made of ice blocks or slabs. It remains warm from inside. Such houses are common in Antarctica and Greenland. Tent. People such as soldiers, scouts and nomads live in tents. Tents are made of a sheet of canvas or nylon. Such people do not stay at one place for a long time. They carry their tents wherever they go. Houseboat Some people live in houseboats. A houseboat is made of wood and it floats on water. We usually see houseboats in Dal Lake of Kashmir 
and LAP backwaters of Kerala. In China, houseboats are called sampans, carvans. People such as Banjaras and Gypsies live in carvans. A carvan is a cart which moves on wheel. People using a carvan keep their belongings in it and move from one place to another. A good house. A house may be small or big, but it should be neat, clean and germ-free. A good house has the following features. It has many doors and windows for ventilation. Doors and windows allow fresh air and sunlight to come in. The sunlight kills many germs that spread diseases. It has a proper drainage system to carry away waste water directly to drains or sewers. It has wire netting on the doors and windows to keep mosquitoes and flies away. It has strong walls, roof and boundary wall for better safety and protection. Keeping the house neat and tidy. All the family members should work together to keep the house clean and tidy. To keep house clean, we should dust and mop the house every day. Mopping should be done using a disinfectant in water. Clean and remove cobwebs regularly. Put garbage in closed bins and dispose it off every day. Clean toilets and bathrooms every day. Change curtains and bed and cushion covers from time to time. Keep the house free from pests such as rats and cockroaches. Decorating the house. People decorate their houses to make them look beautiful. This can be done in a number of ways as given below. Some people make use of handicrafts of different types to decorate their houses. Some draw beautiful impressions and patterns on walls, doors and windows. On special occasions and festivals, people decorate their houses with flowers, rangolis, colorful electric lights, candles and diyas. Chapter 5 Mapping the Neighborhood Locating people or places in a given area is called mapping. The easiest way to locate a place is by knowing the directions. There are four main directions, east, west, north and south. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So, when you face the rising sun, east is in front of you, behind you is the west. Now, stretch both your arms sideways. Your left arm is pointing to the north and right arm is pointing to the south. What is a map? Have you ever seen a map? A map is a geographical drawing of an area drawn on a flat surface such as a paper. It shows us where a place is located. It also shows different landmarks of the area. We can draw the map of a locality, a town, a city, a state, a country, a continent or the world. A collection of maps in a book is called an atlas. Symbols and Colors Symbols and signs are used to show landmarks on a map. A symbol or a sign has a fixed meaning that is used to denote something without using too much space in maps. Some symbols are given below. Peak, Airport, Capital, Town or City, Railways, River. Colors are used to show different landforms and water bodies. Landforms are shown in brown or green and water bodies are shown in blue. Maps have a small key called a legend that tells what each symbol and color stands for. Directions in a map If you look at a map hanging on a wall, its top shows the north and the bottom south. The east is towards the right and the west is towards the left. 
the directions are always shown in the same way in all the maps sketch a sketch is a rough drawing of a place using signs colors and symbols a sketch is not made of exact measurements look at the sketch of alicia's neighborhood it shows some important places around alicia's house landmarks landmarks help us find our way to a destination easily tall buildings parks temples churches monuments etc are some common landmarks how to trace the route in a neighborhood pinky and her uncle live in the same neighborhood she often goes to her uncle's house let us trace the route she takes coming out of her house pinky walks towards the letter box then she turns left and passes the fruit stall she walks further left and reaches the milk booth therefore she turns right on her left is her friend suman's house on her right is a park pinky goes through the park and reaches her uncle's house maps are very useful to us we cannot lose our way if we learn to read directions and symbols correctly This is the reason why maps are sometimes called our guides and friends. Chapter 6 Games we play. Have you heard the saying all work and no play makes jack a dull boy? After a long day's work, we like to relax and have some fun. Having fun makes us feel fresh, active and happy. We can have fun by playing games. Playing games. We play different kinds of games in our leisure time. Games keep us fit, active and healthy. Games can be divided into two groups: indoor and outdoor games. Indoor games. Games that we play inside a room, hall or building are called indoor games. Some popular indoor games are Ludo, Carrom, Chess and Scrabble. Outdoor games. Games that are played outside or in the open are known as outdoor games. Some common outdoor games are cricket, hockey, football, golf and volleyball. Outdoor games increase the fitness level. concentration and alertness children normally play outdoor games in the playground games in the past people used to play simple games in the past those games did not require any high tech equipment set or rules or specialized grounds those games were very different from the games we play today some of the popular games in the past were kabaddi gilli danda kho kho langri tang and kanchas games not only help us stay fit and healthy but they also teach us many good things as we play we learn to work as a team and share our things we also learn how to win and lose gracefully most games have rules that every player should follow Rules make it easier for all to play the game properly. Having fun. We can have fun in many other ways. Some of them are discussed below. We can go to a zoo to see a variety of wild animals. We should not tease or try to feed animals in the zoo. We can go to a shopping mall. A shopping mall has all the things of daily use for sale. under a single roof we should not force our parents for unnecessary or expensive things in the shopping mall we also go to a restaurant for a meal we enjoy delicious dishes there we should show good table manners inside the restaurant we can also go to a music program we love music and songs of different musicians and singers there Some children enjoy drawing 
and painting in their free time. Some prefer reading story books or comics. Some children love to watch cartoons on the television and some love dancing and singing. Playing for earning. Some people play games to earn money. Playing games is a profession for them. Such players are known as professional players. By winning international games, professional players make their country proud. Here are a few famous professional players of India. Virat Kohli, Cricket, MC Mary Com, Boxing, Saina Nehwal, Badminton, Rohan Bopanna, Tennis. Chapter 7 Working for a Living We know that food, clothes and shelter are our basic needs. To meet all our basic needs, we need money. Grown-up people need to do some kind of work to earn money. Any work that a person does to earn money is called an occupation. People take up occupations according to their needs qualification and capability. People work as farmers, teachers, doctors, nurses, cobblers, tailors, engineers, singers, laborers and so on. In fact, all the services we need are provided by different people. We should respect all the jobs that different people do. Some people like chemists, green grocers and milk suppliers work in shops. Some people such as masons, carpenters, plumbers and electricians work in buildings and houses. Work at home. All the family members work together to make their home a better place. Father or mother brings all the things of daily need from the market. In some families, both the parents go out to earn money for the family. In other families, only father earns money and mother does all the household work as a homemaker. Most of us also keep domestic helpers like maid, cook, gardener, driver, security guard etc. to help us in different works. We must be kind to them. Grandparents usually stay at home. They help the parents in looking after the children. Grandmother helps mother in cooking. Many a time, the grandfather drops the children to the bus stop and also picks them up. Sometimes, grandparents also help the children with their studies. Children also help their parents at home. They water the plants, dust the furniture, lay the table, make their beds and arrange their school bags. When our work is over, we do many things for leisure. We play board games with our siblings or grandparents. We also watch our favorite television programs and movies. During holidays, we go to picnics, films, shows and visit friends and relatives. Working Children Many children in poor families do not go to school. They work as domestic helpers, work on farms, in mills, factories or shops. Such children are forced to work and earn money for their family. This is known as child labor. The government of India has made many laws to ban child labor. According to the law, Children below 14 years of age cannot be forced to work in order to earn money. The government has also introduced right to education and midday meal scheme to encourage these children to go to school. Chapter 8 Animals Around Us We see different kinds of animals around us. Some animals are big and some are small. 
Some move slowly and some run very fast. They are found everywhere, on land, in water, in air and under the ground. We keep some animals in our houses or on farms. They are called domestic animals. Cows, buffaloes, goats, horses, sheep and hens are some examples of domestic animals. Some animals live in the jungle. They are called wild animals. Loins, tigers, deer, bears, giraffes and zebras are some examples of wild animals. Let us learn some interesting features about animals. How animals move? Animals move from place to place in search of food, water and shelter. They also move to protect themselves from extreme weather and enemies. Animals move in different ways. Most of the land animals like cows, buffaloes, horses, goats and sheep move with the help of their legs. The cheetah is the fastest land animal. It can run up to a speed of 120 km per hour. Birds fly with the help of their wings. However, some birds cannot fly due to their big size and weak wings. They walk or run on the ground with their legs. Fish swim with the help of fins. They use their tails to change directions in the water. Octopuses, squids and starfish have arms to swim in water. Some animals like kangaroos and rabbits hop. Monkeys and sloths slide, swing and jump mostly on trees. Animals such as snails, snakes and earthworms do not have arms or legs. They creep or crawl on the ground. Movements in different animals are known by different names. What animals eat? Animals eat different kinds of food. The mouth and various other parts of an animal are suited to the kind of food it eats. Let us learn about the feeding habits of some animals. Herbivorous Animals that eat only plants are called herbivorous. Cows, buffaloes, goats, horses, elephants, etc. are herbivorous. Their special teeth help them bite and chew plants. They eat many parts of plants like leaves, fruits, seeds, grains and nuts. Carnivorous Animals like tigers, leopards, wolves and loins eat the flesh of other animals. They are called carnivorous. They have sharp and pointed front teeth to help them tear flesh and very strong back teeth to chew the flesh. Omnivorous Animals like dogs, rats and bear eat both plants and the flesh of animals. They are called omnivorous. Some birds like crows and sparrows are also omnivorous. Scavengers Some animals like jackals, hyenas and vultures eat dead and decaying animals. They are called scavengers. Scavengers are also called nature's sweepers because by eating dead animals, they help in keeping the land clean. Some animals have special feeding habits that are shown below. Lizard, frog and snake swallow their food whole. Mosquitoes and butterfly use their needle-like mouth to suck their food. Dog and cat lap liquid food with the help of their tongues. The elephant uses its trunk to catch food and drink water. Where animals live? Animals live in different kinds of shelters. Many wild animals make shelters for themselves. Human beings make shelters for domestic animals. Monkeys, chimpanzees and sloths live on trees. Rabbits and snakes live in burrows or holes. 
Loins, bears and tigers live in caves or dens. Birds build nests on trees and in buildings. Honeybees live together in beehives. Termites and ants build mounds and anthills. Domestic animals live in shelters made by human beings. Dogs live in kennels. Horses live in stables. Hens live in coops. Cows live in sheds. Sheep live in fold or pen. Fish are kept in aquarium. Creepy crawlies Creepy crawlies are very small animals which creep, crawl, slide, jump and fly. They include insects, worms and spiders. All the insects have six legs. The body of an insect is divided into three parts. Head, thorax and abdomen. It has a pair of fillers and antenna on the head. These are used to feel or sense things around. Some insects like houseflies, butterflies and mosquitoes have wings to help them fly. Some insects like ants, fleas, bedbugs and termites have no wings to fly. Some insects are useful while others are harmful to us. Useful Insects Some kinds of insects are useful to us in many ways. Honeybees give us honey. Honey is a highly nutritious food. Silkworms give us silk, which is used to make fine and expensive clothes. Butterflies and bees carry pollens from flower to flower. This helps plants reproduce. Earthworms make the soil airy and fertile. Harmful insects Some insects can be harmful too. Houseflies spread diseases such as cholera, diarrhea and food poisoning. Termites bore through furniture and other wooden things and damage them. Mosquitoes spread diseases like malaria and dengue. The bite of wasps and bees is very painful. Chapter 9 Birds, Feathers and Beaks Birds are one of the most wonderful creatures on the earth. They are the only animals to have feathers. Apart from feathers, they have two legs, a pair of wings, claws and a beak. Most of the birds can fly. However, some birds like penguin, emu, kiwi, and ostrich cannot fly. All the birds lay eggs in the nests. They take care of their young ones.
still they are able to fly. Bird watching is one of the most popular hobbies of human beings. In fact, human beings got an idea of making aeroplanes from flying birds. Look at the pictures of a bird and an aeroplane. Do you see any similarity between them? Do they have a similar shape? Feathers A bird has three types of feathers. Flight feathers, down feathers and body feathers. The flight feathers are long and strong. They are found on the wings and tail of a bird. They help the birds in flying and changing direction during the flight. The down feathers are short and fluffy. They keep the bird's body warm. Baby birds have their body covered with down feathers. The body feathers cover the body of the bird. They give a definite shape to the bird's body. Some birds like peacocks and parrots have colorful feathers. Water birds like ducks and swans have waterproof feathers. These feathers prevent them from getting wet. What makes birds special? Every part of a bird's body is suited for flying. Let us learn about some special features of a bird that help it fly. Only a light object can float in the air. The bones of birds are light, hollow and strong. Their feathers are very light. The body of a bird is broad in the middle but narrow at both the ends. The body having such a shape is called a streamlined body. A streamlined body helps it cut through the air and fly easily. A bird has two strong wings. These wings have strong muscles for flapping and flying. These special muscles called flight muscles are attached to the breast bone. A bird has a very sharp vision. It can see an object from a long distance. Flying needs very much energy. So, a bird has a very powerful heart to pump maximum blood during flying. It helps in supplying oxygen to the bird continuously. A bird has a pointed tail which helps it in changing the direction while flying. Birds fly with the help of their wings. When a bird starts to fly, it makes two kinds of strokes with its wings, upstroke and downstroke. I, head, beak, Wing, feather, tail, leg, claw. Body parts of a bird. Two kinds of strokes. Upstrokes lift the body of the bird in the air. Downstroke help the bird come down. When the bird remains in the air for a long time, it glides through and flaps its wings. Beaks. Birds. Like other animals also need food to survive, but they do not have teeth to catch or chew the food. Instead, they have a strong beak to eat food. A bird's beak is suited for the type of food it eats. Some birds also use their beaks to protect themselves from their enemies. Birds have different kinds of beaks. For example, eagles Owls and hawks hunt other animals and eat their flesh. So they have strong, sharp and hooked beaks. Let us learn about various kinds of beaks in birds and the food they consume with their help. Pigeon Beak Small and short Food Seeds Sparrow Beak Small and short Food, seeds, tender plants and insects. Hummingbird, beak, long and straw-like. Food, nectar. Eagle, 
beak, strong, sharp and hooked. Food, birds, mice, snakes and other small animals. Parrot, beak, strong and curved. Food, fruits and seeds. Duck, beak, broad and flat. Food, warm and water plants. Peacock, beak, sharp and pointed. Food, snakes, frogs, garden lizards, leaves and seeds. Kingfisher, beak, strong, long and pointed. Food, fish, frogs and crabs. Nesting habits in birds. Birds make nests to lay eggs, hatch their babies and protect them from enemies. Some birds make their nests in trees and some birds make their nests on land. Birds use a variety of things to build their nests. These things include twigs, dry leaves, cotton, feathers, paper, wool, etc. Nests of some birds A tailor bird uses its sharp needle-like beak to stitch its nest. A woodpecker makes a hole in the trunk of a tree to make its nest. A bulbul builds its nest in bushes. A cuckoo does not build its own nest. It lays eggs in the nest of a crow. A penguin makes its nest on the ground. Chapter 10 Plants and Leaves We see different types of plants around us. Some are tall and strong while others are small and weak. Some grow on land while others grow in water. Some live for many years while others last for a few months. We can group plants on the basis of three features. Size, place where they grow, and how long they live. Plants grouped on the basis of size. Herbs. Herbs are very small plants with soft green stems. Their height is usually less than a meter. They are seasonal plants and normally live for less than a year. Some examples of herbs are given below. Coriander, paddy, wheat, sunflower. Shrubs. Shrubs are medium-sized bushy plants. Their height varies from 1 to 3 meters. They have hard and thin stems with many branches. They live for many years. Some examples of shrubs are given below. Rose, cotton, bougainvillea, lemon. Trees. Trees are the biggest plants. They are tall and strong. They have a hard and thick stem called trunk. Most of the trees have many branches. Some examples of trees are given below. Mango, banyan, spruce, coconut. Climbers Some plants cannot stand straight. They need a support to climb up. Such plants are called climbers. Plants grouped according to the place where they grow. Land plants Different types of plants grow on land. Some land plants need lots of water to grow like sugarcane, rubber tree, coffee, coconut and paddy. There are some other plants like cactus, date, palm and aloe vera need very less quantity of water to survive. Water plants Plants that grow in water are called aquatic plants. Some plants like duckweed and water hyacinth float on the water surface. They are called floating plants. They have spongy stems with lots of empty space throughout their body filled with air. This makes the plants light enough to float. Some plants like water lily and lotus have roots that fix the plants to the soil at the bottom of the pond. They are called 
fixed water plants. They have flat plate-like leaves that float over the surface of water. Their stems are hollow and light. Some plants such as hydrilla and tape grass live completely under water. They are called submerged or underwater plants. They have narrow and thin leaves. Plants grouped according to the lifespan. Annuals are plants that live for one season only. Some plants are tomato, paddy, wheat, bean and maize. Beanials are plants that live for two seasons. The stem and leaves develop in the first season. Flowers develop and fruits ripen in the second season. Some examples are carrot, radish, onion and turnip. Perennials are plants that live for many years. Some examples are neem, banyan, eucalyptus, mango and coconut. Leaves Leaves are one of the most important parts of a plant. They are responsible for making food and also help the plant cope with various weather conditions to survive. Leaves come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, large, small, thick and thin. They also vary in their fragrances, colors and textures. In fact, you can tell quite a lot about a plant including the kind of surrounding it grows in just by studying its leaves. Mango, people, banana, rose. Parts of a leaf. If you look at a leaf, you will find that it has a flat and broad surface. This is called the leaf blade or lamina. There is a design or pattern on the lamina. This pattern is made by thin lines called veins. Each leaf has one main vein and many side veins. The veins carry water and minerals to the leaf. They also carry prepared food to all the parts of the plant. Parts of a leaf Stalk, lamina, main vein, side veins. The leaf is attached to the stem with a stalk. There are many tiny holes called stomata on the lower side of the leaf. Stomata can only be seen with the help of a powerful magnifying glass or microscope. The stomata on a leaf help in exchanging gases. They take in carbon dioxide from the air and give out oxygen. Functions of a leaf Every green leaf has a green pigment called chlorophyll. It helps the leaf make its own food. A leaf makes food with the help of water, carbon dioxide, sunlight and chlorophyll. The food making process by a leaf is called photosynthesis. Since leaves make food for the plant, they are also called the kitchen of the plant. Some plants have leaves of different colors such as purple, orange, yellow or red. Such plants can make their own food. Some plants such as mushrooms, yeast and molds do not have chlorophyll. So they cannot make their own food. Photosynthesis Sunlight Carbon dioxide enters through stomata, oxygen comes out through stomata, food goes to other parts, water enters through the roots, water. Shedding of leaves In winter, the days are short and there is not enough sunlight for the plants to make their own food. Therefore, chlorophyll in them begins to fade. As a result, they turn yellow, dry up and start falling. Some trees shed all their leaves once in a year. Some trees shed only a few leaves throughout the year. Gulmohar in summer, Gulmohar in winter. When the dry leaves fall down, they rot and mix with the soil. 
these rotten leaves form humus. Humus is an important constituent of the top layer of the soil. It makes the soil fertile. Uses of leaves We use leaves in many ways. We eat leaves of some plants like mint, coriander, cabbage, fenugreek and spinach as wedge. Chapter 11 Water is Life All the living things need water to stay alive. We need water for drinking, bathing, cooking, washing and cleaning. Water also helps our body in digesting food. Farmers need water for growing crops. Water is also used for making electricity. Plants need water for growing well and making food. Water is home to many plants and animals. Animals not only need water for drinking but also for cleaning and cooling themselves. Plants need water. Water is used for cooking. Animals drink water. Sources of water Rain is the main source of water on earth. When it rains, the rainwater gets collected in ponds, lakes, rivers, seas and oceans. Rivers carry rainwater to the seas and oceans. Water of seas and oceans is very salty. We cannot use it. Some of the rainwater seeps into the ground. It is called underground water. This water is drawn out through wells, tube wells and hand pumps. Forms of Water In nature, water is found in three forms, solid, liquid and gas. Ice is the solid form of water. Water that we drink is the liquid form. Steam or water vapor is the gaseous form of water. Water changes its form whenever it is heated or cooled. Ice, water, steam. Change in forms of water. Water when heated becomes steam. Ice when heated become water. When cooled down become ice. Water cycle. When we spread out wet clothes in the sun, the water from the clothes turn into water vapor. This vapor goes into the air and the clothes dries up. In the same way, sunlight changes water from lakes, ponds, rivers and seas into water vapor. The steam being lighter than water rises up into the air. This process of water changing in water vapor is known as evaporation. High up in the atmosphere, Water vapor comes in contact with cold air and turns back into water to form clouds. This process of water vapor cooling down to form clouds is called condensation. The clouds float in the atmosphere. When they become very heavy, they let the water fall down on the earth in the form of rain. This is called precipitation. The rainwater returns to the water bodies on the earth. This continuous cycle of water circulating between the earth's surface and the atmosphere is called the water cycle. Contamination of water Sometimes harmful substances get mixed with water and make it dirty. It is called contamination of water. Various human activities are responsible for contamination of water. Water becomes unsuitable for drinking due to its contamination. Some of the activities which pollute water are given below. Washing clothes and bathing in water bodies like rivers and lakes. Throwing kitchen waste and waste from factories and garbage directly into water bodies. Animals taking bath in rivers, lakes, etc. Water supply In cities, water is distributed to households through a network of pipes. The water which reaches our home comes from lakes and rivers. This water is purified before it reaches us. Water is directed from lakes or rivers 
to big purification plants. Here, water is purified and collected in big tanks. From these tanks, water is supplied to the taps in our homes through pipelines. The water that reaches our homes is still not clean. It has to be made safe for drinking. If we drink water that is not clean, we may get waterborne diseases like cholera and jaundice. We can clean water by boiling it. Boiling the water kills germs in it. Water can also be purified by using water filters or water purifiers. Filtering water removes impurities such as sand and dust. Chapter 12 Storing and Saving Water We know that three-fourths of the Earth's surface is covered with water. But only a small quantity of water is usable. It is because the water in seas and oceans is salty and unfit for use. Therefore, fresh water is very important and precious. So, it should be used wisely. To avoid wastage of water, we must use and store it carefully. Storage of Water Water is generally stored in tanks, dams, etc. At homes, in towns and cities, we usually store water in overhead tanks and in small containers made of steel, aluminium or plastic. In villages, earthen pots and containers are made of copper or brass are used to store water. Safe storage and handling of drinking water. Drinking water should be clean and germ-free. If we drink contaminated water, we fall sick. Following things should be kept in mind to keep our water pure and clean. Always store water in clean containers. Keep stored water at a neat and clean place. Use containers with a lid. Never put your hands inside the drinking water. Use a long-handled mug to take out water from the container. Boil water to kill the germs. Use only boiled water for drinking purposes as it is free from germs. Why should we save water? As you know how important water is for all living beings, we need to save it. The following activities lead to the wastage of water. Use of drinking water in wasteful activities such as washing clothes and cleaning cars. Overdrawing of underground water. Excessive irrigation of crop fields. Playing with water. Leaking taps or pipes. Ways to save water. Let us know some ways to save water. Turn off the tap while brushing your teeth. Collect rainwater and use it for washing things, cleaning utensils, etc. Use a bucket and mug or watering can to water plants instead of using a pipe. Always turn off the tap after use. Get leaking pipelines repaired immediately. Reuse water wherever you can. For example, wash stairs, balcony etc. with the water left after washing vegetables. Water used for washing fruits and vegetables can also be used to water plants. Rainwater Harvesting Rainwater harvesting is an excellent way of storing and saving rainwater for future use in summers and in places where there is a scarcity of water. The rainwater from the roof of the house is collected in a tank with the help of a pipe. A sieve is attached to the mouth of a pipe to filter out the dirt. The sloping roof of house also allows water to drain off easily and collect in the tank. A portion at the bottom of the tank is left uncemented so that a small amount of water 
keeps on seeping into the ground. This underground water can be used for various purposes. Chapter 13 Travel Time The ways or methods used to move people and goods from one place to another are called means of transport. People travel for various reasons. Every day you travel to school and your parents go to work. We sometimes travel within our town or city and sometimes go out of town or city. The means of transport one chooses depends upon the place, distance that needs to be covered, its cost and time in hand. Means of transport can be divided into three groups. Land transport, water transport and air transport. Land transport Vehicles commonly used for land transport in town and cities are rickshaws, bicycles, auto rickshaws, motorcycles, cars, buses, trucks and trains. In rural areas, bullocks, horses and donkeys are used to carry people and goods. High up in the hills, Animals such as yaks and ponies help carry people and goods. Elephants help in transportation in thick forest areas. Camels are used in deserts for transport. The camel is also called the ship of the desert. These days, roads in towns and cities are full of vehicles. There are problems of traffic jam in almost all all the major cities. Vehicles on the road release a lot of smoke and poisonous gases. The emission of poisonous gases makes the air polluted. Rash driving by irresponsible people causes road accidents. We should follow traffic rules while on the road. People usually use trains to travel long distances. Trains also carry heavy goods like food grains, coal, machines and cement to far-off places. In Delhi, Lucknow, Jaipur, Kochi, Chennai, Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Gurugram, Mumbai and Kolkata, people travel by metro train. Metro trains are fast and cause no pollution. They have also eased traffic jams significantly. They run both on the ground and under the ground. Water transport Boats, steamers and ships are the main means of water transport. Boats and steamers carry people and goods across the rivers and seas. In India, two rivers, the Ganga and the Brahmaputra, are used for inland water transport. Ships carry people and heavy goods across the seas and the oceans. The heavy goods carried by ships are known as cargo. However, it takes a long time to travel by ships from one place to another. Huge cruise ships carry thousands of people. They have big rooms, dining halls, swimming pools and many other facilities. In Kerala, people mostly use backwaters for travelling. A backwater is a part of a river that is away from the main river. In a backwater, water moves slowly. People use boats and houseboats to move across the backwaters. Place at the seashore where ships are loaded and unloaded is called a port. India has very efficient ports all along its coast. Mumbai is the biggest and the busiest port in India. Boat Cargo ship, cruise. Air transport. Aeroplanes and helicopters are the main means of air transport. Aeroplanes are the fastest and the most expensive means of transport. They need an airport to land and take off. Helicopters are used to reach the places where other means of transport fail to reach. They are also used to drop food clothes, medicines and other items for people during natural disasters 
like floods and earthquakes. India has many airports. Given below is a list of some big airports in India. Name of airport and the city. Indira Gandhi International Airport, New Delhi. Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport, Mumbai. Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose International Airport, Kolkata. Anna Durai International Airport, Chennai. Rajiv Gandhi International Airport, Hyderabad. The History of Transport Long, long ago, the early men did not have any mode of transport. They walked from place to place or rode on animals. They also used animals to transport things from place to place. Then, they invented the wheel. The wheel was used with carts drawn by animals at first. Later on, many other vehicles such as bicycles, trains, scooters and cars were invented. All of these vehicles have wheels. The invention of the wheel has been a very important event in the history of transport. Look at the pictures given on the next page showing how different means of transport have undergone change. Railways Trains have become the most convenient mode of transport for covering long distances. Most of the cities and towns are connected by railway network and have railway stations where people can board trains to go to far-off places. Passenger trains carry people to different places. Goods trains carry heavy things such as coal, iron machines and food grains. Have you ever been to a railway station? Different people work at a railway station and on the train. There is a porter or coolie who helps us carry our luggage. There is a ticket examiner who checks our tickets on the train. There is an engine driver who drives the train. There is a guard who shows a green flag and blows a whistle when the train is ready to move. There are vendors and shopkeepers who sell snacks, tea, books, magazines etc. on the railway station. Chapter 14 Keeping in Touch All of us love to keep in touch with our friends and relatives. However, it is not always possible to visit them. Then, how can we keep in touch with them? We can exchange our thoughts and feelings with them by various means of communication. The process of sending and receiving messages is called communication. Long ago, messages were sent through trained pigeons or persons. Today, we have a number of ways to communicate and faster means of communication. Post Postcards, envelopes, inland letters and aerograms are common means of communication by post. We can buy any of them from a post office. After writing our message and the address of the person we are writing to, we post the letter in a letterbox. The postman collects all the letters from the letterbox and takes them to the post office in a bag. There, these letters are sorted out according to the places they have to be sent. The letters are then stamped and put into different mailboxes. The letters are then loaded into mail vans and taken to the railway station, port or airport. From there, they are sent to the cities and towns according to the address written on them. Once they reach the city or town, they are taken to the main post office. Here they are stamped again and sorted on the basis of different areas of that place. The postman takes the letters and delivers them to the written address. Urgent letters can be sent through couriers. The post office offers a special service 
called the speed post to deliver letters and parcels much faster. For quick and safe delivery, we must write the complete address with correct PIN code. A PIN, Postal Index Number Code, ensures delivery of the letters at the correct address. In India, a PIN code has six digits. Telephone Telephone is the quickest means of communication. Using a telephone, we can easily talk to a friend or relative in our own town or city, in another town or city, or even in another country instantly. Cellular phones, commonly known as mobile phones, have made life much easier. Unlike landline phones, which are fixed to a particular place, mobiles can be carried anywhere. We can also send messages, popularly called the SMS, short messaging service, from them. A fax machine connected to a telephone line can be used to send messages, pictures, or any other written content instantly. Internet and Email Computers are the most modern means of communication. The Internet is a communication network that connects computers all over the world. We can send pictures and printed messages from one computer to another through the Internet. This system of sending messages from one computer to another is called email. The email message is delivered almost instantly. Mass communication All the means of communication we have read so far are the means of personal communication. There are times when we need to pass on some messages to a large number of people at the same time. For example, a consumer goods company has to send a message to a large number of people in the form of an advertisement to inform them about its new product. This is done through television, radio, newspapers and magazines. They are known as mass media. Let us learn about them in brief. Television Television is a visual means of communication. It means that television gives information through pictures as well as sound. Television also brings various programs on latest news, history, animal and plant life, quiz and weather forecast. Radio Radio is the first ever means of wireless communication. It broadcasts news and programs to several people at a time. Even illiterate people can understand news and other programs on a radio easily. Newspaper Newspapers are the cheapest means of communication. They print local as well as global news in many languages. People who collect news from different places are called journalists. We can read newspapers by various news websites too. Books and magazines also give a variety of information. Satellites Communication satellites move around the earth in space. They help in exchanging telephone messages and broadcasting radio and telecasting TV programs around the world at the same time. Satellites make it possible to watch live programs on TV and in Chapter 15 Textile Early humans did not know much about clothing. They used the bark of trees leaves or animal skin to cover themselves and to stay warm. Later, they wore clothes made by sewing animal skins together. Over a period of time, they learned the art of spinning fibers such as cotton, silk, jute and wool into threads and weaving the threads into cloth. Types of Clothes Today, a variety of clothes are made from different materials in different colors and designs.
people wear clothes according to the climate of the place where they live, their culture and tradition, the amount of money that they can spend on their clothes, the latest fashion and trends. In India, people living in villages generally wear traditional clothes. People living in different states of India wear different types of traditional clothes. In towns and cities, men mostly wear shirts, trousers, t-shirts and jeans. Women mostly wear salwar kameez, saris, skirts, tops, t-shirts and jeans. Clothes we wear In India, people wear stitched as well as unstitched clothes. A fabric can be cut and stitched to make clothes. We mostly wear stitched clothes such as skirts, trousers, shirts, t-shirts and many others. A cloth that is not stitched is an unstitched cloth. People wear unstitched clothes by wrapping them around their body. Let us read about some unstitched clothes that people wear. Unstitched clothes Sari In India, women mostly wear saris. A sari is a long unstitched fabric that women wrap around themselves in different styles. The way in which a woman wear a sari indicates the state to which she belongs to. For example, in Assam, women wear a mekla, a long cloth wrapped around the waist. It is worn with a blouse and a chadar. The chadar is wrapped around the upper body. Lungi and dhoti Men also wear unstitched clothes in the form of lungis and dhotis. Just like saris, dhotis and lungis are also tied in different ways in different states. They are usually worn with a kurta or a long shirt. Dupatta and turban A dupatta is a long unstitched cloth used by women to cover their head or wrap around the upper part of their body. It is known by different names such as Orni, Chunri and Chunni. Women in different states wear it in different ways. In Punjab, women wear it with salwar kameez. In Rajasthan and Haryana, they wear it with a traditional skirt and blouse called lehenga choli. In Uttar Pradesh, they wear it with churidar kurta. In Jammu and Kashmir, they wear it with a firan. Just like women, men also wear unstitched clothes to cover their head. It is called a turban or pagri. It is a long unstitched cloth worn in different ways in different parts of the country. Shawl A shawl is also an unstitched piece of cloth that is usually made of wool. It is worn by both men and women, especially in winter. Different kinds of shawls are made in different parts of India. Kashmiri shawls are considered to be most expensive because they are made of very fine wool and are beautifully embroidered. Cloth making Textiles mean woven or machine knitted fabrics. Cloth or fabric is made from fibers of cotton, jute, silk, wool, etc. The two ways of making cloth from fibers are weaving and knitting. Weaving is a process of making cloth by repeatedly crossing a fine thread through sets of other threads. It is done on special machines called looms. Looms are of two kinds, hand looms and power looms. Saris, trousers, frocks and shirts are made from woven fabrics. Knitting is done by hand or by using machines. Sweaters, socks, gloves, Mufflers and caps are made from knitted fabric. Coloring the cloth A dye is a substance that is used to color the cloth. The threads are colored or dyed before weaving or knitting. 
on some occasions cloth is first woven and then dyed in the past dyes were made from natural colors of fruits flowers leaves and vegetables today we mostly use synthetic dyes made from chemicals red yellow and blue are primary colors all other colors are made by mixing the primary colors the colors used on the clothes are usually permanent this means that they do not fade easily however some dyes used in fabrics lose color and run off with time we should wash such clothes with care they should be dried in the shade to avoid color fading designs on the cloth we not only like to wear colorful clothes but also like to have different designs and patterns on them after the cloth is dyed certain patterns and designs are made on it there are many ways to make designs on the clothes block printing in this method wooden blocks are made with different designs on their underside these blocks are then dipped in color and pressed on the cloth tie and dye in this method the cloth is folded or tied into knots with a thread that has been rubbed with wax the cloth is then dyed in different colors a beautiful pattern is formed when the knot is opened it is a very popular art of dyeing clothes in rajasthan and west bengal kalamkari in this method a special kalam or pen is used to paint designs on the cloth andhra pradesh is known for its kalamkari work chapter 16 pottery The art of making pots by shaping and baking clay is known as pottery. In India, we have found pots and pans of clay that were used by the people of the Indus Valley civilization more than 4000 years ago. The earliest pots were made by molding clay in different shapes and drying them in the sun. Clay is a special kind of soil that is sticky and elastic when wet and hard and strong when dry steps involved in making pottery pottery making involves the following steps the first step is the selection of right kind of clay it is dug out from the ground then enough quantity of water is added to knead the clay well and make it into a lump The lump is shaped or molded into different objects by different methods. Then they are sun-dried and baked to make them stronger. The baked objects are then decorated and painted. Methods of molding the clay. Molding of the clay can be done by two methods: hand method and wheel method. Hand method is a simple method in which All the works are done by hands. There are three methods of molding clay by hands: coiling, slab building, and press molding. Wheel method is very common. In this method, the potter's wheel is used to mold the clay into different objects. The potter's wheel is a flat and round wooden or metallic wheel. In this method, The potter puts a lump of kneaded clay at the center of the wheel. Then he spins the wheel with a stick or electric motor. When the wheel spins very fast, potter gives shape to the clay using his hands and fingers by pressing, squeezing and molding the clay. Once the clay is given desired shape, the potter cuts off the base of the object from the clay lump. and keeps it aside to dry in the sun when the pottery dries completely it is baked at very high temperature in a special oven called kiln to make it hard and strong decorating pottery pottery can be made attractive by decorating or glazing it shapes can be carved on its surface or it can be decorated 
using different colors. Glaze is a type of paint or glossy material that is spread on it to give the pottery a smooth, shiny look. It also makes the pottery waterproof. Uses of Pottery Earlier, people used pottery for storing water, grains and even for cooking, eating and drinking. In many houses, people still use utensils made of clay for different purposes. For example, kundis are used to set curd, handis are used to cook dal, water is stored in gharas and surahis, tea is often served in kulhars, ghatam is used as a musical instrument.